Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I don't think I'd be stretching it to say that every time I complain that I may be hindering the Holy Spirit from doing something in my life that he wants to do and there's probably angels standing by that are just thinking I just wish you'd be quiet because I'm trying to help you. This morning, I'm going to teach a little message that everybody's going to understand. Nobody's going to be confused. You may not like it, but you won't be confused by it. <laughs> And everybody needs it. I'm personally glad I'm preaching this today because it's really going to help me. You know, everything that we hear doesn't have to be something new. It just needs to be now. It needs to be what's for now. And so I'm calling this message, Prepare for increase. How many of you like increase? All right. But actually the message is about not complaining. I hid it under that title <laughs> because if anybody wants to buy a copy of this later, you won't buy it if it says don't complain. <laughs> if I wrote a book on not complaining, it would just be a waste of time. But I can write one on prepare for increase, and man, whoo, you should have seen how excited you looked when I said I was teaching on preparing for increase. And so first I want to start by sharing something with you from my journal from this year. And on January the 22nd, the word complaining came up in my heart. So I wrote down complaining, and then the Lord spoke to my heart, beware of complaining. It weakens your wall of protection. Angels hearken to God's word. Speak the word and experience more of their help. Praise, gratitude, and thanksgiving make us stronger and release more help from angels and the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm always glad when God gives me reminders like this because complaining is something that we just automatically do every time we have an inconvenience. But if we're going to not complain, we're going to have to do it on purpose. We don't have to try to complain, but we do have to try not to complain. How many of you agree? And it's not that we don't have anything to complain about. I mean, we've all got numerous things that we can complain about probably on a daily basis. But I don't think that we realize how truly dangerous complaining is. Can I just start by saying you're not going to complain your way into increase? That's not how you get it. Well, three days later, January the 25th, I wrote, actually January 26th, yesterday while I was walking, the Lord put the word increase into my heart. It came in me like a fire. I believe I am to prophetically declare increase over our ministry and our lives. And by the way, that includes anybody who's a partner with this ministry. Increase in every area, soul save, creativity, energy, enthusiasm, more laughter. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a big increase in laughter this year. <laughs> Finances, health, peace, favor, and I've got a big long list. But I realize that I believe God spoke the word about being even more careful than ever about complaining, and I don't consider myself to be a big complainer now. I used to be, but God just kept chipping away at it and chipping away at it and chipping away at it, and every time I start to get maybe a little bit loose and murmuring a little bit more, I'll get a fresh word about not complaining. So how many of you can use this today? It might help you. I, there's no reason for anybody in the building not to have your hand up. <laughs> Amen? Because it's just the easiest thing in the world to do. And so I realized that God spoke that word to me about not complaining because he does want to give us increase, all of us really, but I'm not going to complain my way into increase. The more grateful I am, the more increase God can bring in my life. Now, Psalm 103:20. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you his angels, 
you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. So Psalm 103 says that angels hearken to the voice of God's word. How many of you know enough about the Bible to know that according to the word, you have angels assigned to you? Guardian angels, angels, I believe the room today is full of angels. I mean, I just believe that. I believe they go everywhere we go. I think sometimes we need to think about it a little bit more. And, uh, but we can release their help in our lives by confessing the word, by being grateful and thankful, and we actually hinder their help when we murmur and complain and find fault with everything around us. So I'm a firm believer in declaring the word. I don't even have the time to tell you how much declaring the word of God out loud over my life and family and ministry has helped me over the years. I mean, it's just been phenomenal the results that I've seen by just speaking out the word instead of always sitting around speaking out how I feel. And that doesn't mean that I don't get off into wrong areas and sometimes talk a lot about how I feel because I do. But I have learned over the years and I'm still learning because many years ago, God gave me a real healthy reverential fear of complaining. So let me just say that I believe that complaining is sin. We'll just wait a minute and let that soak. <laughs> Some things you can't just rush over. Well, why would it be sin? I'm just expressing how I feel. Well, the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin, and we're not complaining by faith. <laughs> we don't really expect God to answer our complaints. Now, this is something that God spoke to me many years ago, and I'd like to share it with you. Joyce, if you're going to complain about something, then don't bother praying about it. Well, don't patty cake. If you're going to clap, clap. <laughs> Think about that. If we're going to complain about something, then just don't bother praying about it. Philippians 4, 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. It doesn't say with complaining, with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad-hearted continually. Be unceasing in prayer, praying perseveringly and thank God in everything. No matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks for this is the will of God. This is the will of God. This is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. You know, I believe that God showed me a long time ago that there's so many people that are wanting to know, well, what's God's will for my life? What's God's will for my life? I don't know what God wants me to do. What's God's will for my life? But if we just start with the things that we do know, like be thankful in all things, then that kind of opens the door for God to reveal the rest of it to us in his time and in his way. You know, when you don't know what to do in a situation, keep doing what you know to do, which is to be thankful in all things. And in every situation, try to find something positive in it and speak that out. Do not quench the Holy Spirit, verse 19 says. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. He hasn't just all of a sudden now gone to a whole new subject. He's saying, be thankful in everything, for this is the will of God. For those of you who are in Christ Jesus, do not quench the Holy Spirit. And you know what it means to quench the Spirit? To stop, suppress, or subdue. So I don't think I'd be stretching it to say that every time I complain that I may be hindering the Holy Spirit from doing something in my life that he wants to do 
and there's probably angels standing by that are just thinking, I just wish you'd be quiet because I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Amen. Now, you know, the flesh, it's interesting about complaining because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you're by yourself, all by yourself, you don't complain. It's only when people come around. And the reason is, is we want somebody to feel sorry for us. And it's not gonna help us. I had all these issues, and one of my biggest problems was I felt sorry for myself all the time. I felt sorry for myself because I'd been abused as a child. I felt sorry for myself because I didn't get a chance to go to college. I felt sorry for myself because my metabolism runs slow. I felt, I mean, there was a jillion reasons, you know, why. I could feel sorry for myself, amen? amen. And um, boy, I'd get upset and maybe something was going bad and I'd get upset and I'd want Dave to feel sorry for me. And he, I remember him looking at me and saying, I am not gonna feel sorry for you. That is not what you need. Woo. <laughs> but you know what, he was right. Because as long as we keep getting somebody to encourage us in our pitifulness, then we're never gonna get strong and come out of it and say, no matter what has happened to me, I can overcome it through Christ. And if you listen to much of my teaching, you've heard me say, we cannot be pitiful and powerful at the same time. So I've kind of noticed that when I'm in a room by myself, I don't moan and groan and complain, but boy, if somebody walks in. <laughs> Yesterday morning, I was on the treadmill. I'd already been on the bike. I was on the treadmill. I was almost at five miles. I'm sweating. My face is red. My heart is beating. And I was just doing my workout. Dave walked in, and I noticed right away, I'm like, oh, <laughs> phew. Boy, <laughs> and God just caused me to realize, now listen to you, you're just trying to get some attention for your flesh, <laughs> just trying to get somebody to say, oh, you are so wonderful. <laughs> you're just working so hard, you are so wonderful. You come on, pay attention. You'll notice when you're in a room by yourself, you don't murmur and complain, but boy, when somebody comes around, it's another whole story. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. I love these scriptures, love them. Do all things without grumbling. Yes, all things. Yes, that includes your thing. Can you clean your house without grumbling? Guys, can you cut the grass without grumbling? Can you drive in traffic without grumbling? Can you go to the grocery store without grumbling about high prices? <laughs> Man, it's a little too quiet in here for comfort. <laughs> now you see why a book on complaining wouldn't sell. <laughs> but we're not talking about complaining this morning. We're talking about preparing for increase. Okay. So we're excited about that, aren't we? We're preparing for increase. Now I'm not telling you that you don't have a reason to complain. But I am saying that it won't do us any good at all. So this is about being smart enough to help ourselves get to the place where we want to be. Because you know what the word complain means? Part of the definition of the word complain means to remain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to these guys back here. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when you're back there and everybody ignores you? I'm going to pay attention to you. Amen. <laughs> to remain, to stay overnight, one, defini one definition said. You know, the Israelites complained and they wandered around in the desert for 40 years. Jesus praised God on the cross and he got raised from the dead. Yeah. 
And by the way, if we want to think about our suffering and whether or not we could avoid complaining, does anybody here remember Jesus complaining on the cross? <laughs> or in the Garden of Gethsemane? Or any time he was betrayed or abandoned or abused? Nope, never complained. Hey, I'll pray for you if you'll pray for me. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. The Amplified Bible says against God. So it kind of seems to me like God takes it personally. You say, well, I'm not really complaining about God. I'm just complaining about my situation. But do we believe God's in control? Well, I just think God's in control of my blessings, not this stuff. That you may show yourselves, and this is the part I love, that you may show yourselves, verse 15, Philippians 2, 15, that you may show yourselves to be blameless, guileless, innocent, uncontaminated, children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and a wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars and beacons shining out clearly in a dark world. So am I actually seeing that right? Is he actually saying, if you can just get out in the world and not complain, that, that's it. Just, if you can just get out there and get through the day and don't complain, then man, the world is such a mess that you are going to just seem like this bright light in the midst of all the darkness that's going on out there. And you know what? This is something we can do. I said last night, all Christians have a job. And if you want to get a payday, you better go to work. You know, when everybody sits around the lunch table and complains about their jobs and their boss and their pay and the conditions, you can sit there and represent God without preaching one sermon by just sitting there, not joining in, and saying, well, you know, things may not be perfect here, but I'm, I'm glad I got a job. There's a lot of people who don't even have a job. <laughs> Amen. You can say things to turn the atmosphere around without sounding super religious, which sometimes turns people off. So I want to say, out in the world, don't blend in, stand out. Make people wonder why you're different. Make them wonder why you're happy. Why you don't complain about everything that's going on. Why you're not afraid of everything that's going on in your life. Don't complain about the kids that you prayed God to give you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't complain about that husband that you begged God to give you for 20 years. Or your wife. Man, I tell you, we were in Florida recently, and we were on the 27th floor. I had on my pajamas, I was laying in bed, and the fire alarm went off in the building. They shut the elevators down when the fire alarm went off. So I had to get myself up, put some clothes on, and we had to walk down 27 flights of stairs. Now, I would love to stand here and tell you that I did it without complaining. <laughs> that is why I'm preaching to myself today. If you don't need this, I'll be happy to just preach to myself. <laughs> but Dave and I did say, well, thank God we can walk down 27 flights of stairs. Amen? See, here's the thing. Honestly, and I, I, how many of you have seen that movie Pollyanna where she played the glad game? Okay, I know that's kind of an old movie. There's about 10 of you. That's good, so. <laughs> I just dated myself. Well, anyway, go rent Pollyanna and watch it. It's a happy movie. She played the glad game. And no matter what happened, she found a way to be glad. And I think that's a good game for us to play. And the devil hates it when you play the glad game. 
because he's after our joy. He's not after our stuff, he's after our joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you remember what I said in here in the very beginning? I think we need to go back and see it one more time. Oh, I bet you guys would like to get a hold of one of my journals, wouldn't you? And just <laughs> oh, man, I keep those things locked up tight. I don't want everybody knowing about all my stuff till I'm dead. <laughs> However, in the second service, I'm going to read you part of one of my journals, and you are going to fall on the floor laughing. It is so funny. I told God, I'm sorry to tell you that I'm quitting. I can't go on. <laughs> Beware of complaining. It weakens our wall of protection. Joy is our strength, but complaining weakens us. How about inconvenience? Can we make it through an inconvenience <laughs> without complaining? Can you make it through an interruption without complaining. This stupid cell phone drives me crazy. Every time I turn around, it beeps and beeps and bings and bings and beeps. <laughs> well, but you're the one that runs out and buys the newest version of every one that comes out. <laughs> when I praise and I'm thankful, every time I say, thank you, God, angels go to work in my life. But I am talking this morning about not just those devastating things, although it's good to make it through that, but just to, to get through even, I think sometimes we never have big victories till we start having small victories. And so why don't you just make a commitment asking God to help you to start trying to get through just one day at a time, or half a day maybe, or an hour. Or maybe you could just try to get out of the church today without. Well, I really pray that you enjoyed the teaching today, and I'm about to give you a very simple instruction, so be sure you listen carefully. One of the ways that we prepare for increase or promotion in our life is to be thankful about where we're at. Don't forget to be grateful for all that God is already doing in your life. When you're thankful, it creates an atmosphere of joy, and joy brings strength to you. Be very careful that you don't get into complaining, because if you do, it's going to keep you all stressed out and keep you right where you're at. And I need this advice too. Sometimes I find myself drifting over into complaining and murmuring. Sometimes Dave and I will even remind each other, don't, you know, don't need to complain, don't complain. And I pray pretty much every day that God will help me not to complain because we are all so blessed. And I realize you probably have problems in your life like everybody else does, but be careful that you don't just look at the problems and don't look at your blessings. person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted and then they look at you, get make eye contact and you smile and they read that smile and then they start smiling and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. <laughs> so what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today.
You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen, maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce, met haar levensverhaal, met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebroschure en bel 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.